So example seven, we're given an angle, or sorry, side A is 9.0, side B is 14, and side C is 8.0, solve the triangle. Uh, it does seem like they're being really um, deliberate about using significant digits in these problems, but again, I'm not so concerned about significant digits right now. We, we learned about that, we used it, so I'm, I'm not too concerned about that, but if it's me looking at this problem, I'm thinking that the book wants you to go two sig figs on all your answers. Everything's given two sig figs, but again, I, I like a couple decimal places. I just I, I'm a fan of that, so we'll go that route. Um, looking at these three um, sides, 8, 9, and 14, which angle has to be the biggest angle? B. B, right? So 14 is the biggest side, 9 and 8 are smaller than 14. 14 is biggest, so B is biggest. Okay, so if I'm using law of cosines, and I can't use law of sines to find the biggest angle, I can't trust it, all right? Because all the law of sines ever gives me is acute answers. In a triangle, you have the biggest angle that could be acute, obtuse, or right. The other two are always acute angles. So if I'm using the law of science to find an angle that's not the biggest, I know it's acute. I know the calculator answer is going to be the one I'm looking for. There's no, um, you have to get the pod, the acute and the obtuse answer scenario like we had in the side side angle situation yesterday. So if this is me and I see B is the biggest angle, I'm going to find angle B first. That's what I would do. So I'm going to do 14 squared equals 8 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 8 times 9 cosine of B. I could have just as easily said 9 squared equals 8 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 8 times 14 cosine of A. Or uh, 8 squared equals 9 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 9 times 14 cosine of C. So it doesn't matter which one you do, but again, if I'm doing law of cosines and I can see B is the biggest angle, I'm going to find B. Law of cosines is much more um, trusting when you're trying to find an angle measure. It will give you the exact answer, the only answer possible to the problem. Okay, now, the difference between this one and the previous one is now this side over here isn't all numerical. We have this term over here, 2 times 8 times 9 cosine of B. It has this cosine of B, and the B is involved, it's inside of the cosine function. So what I need you guys to train yourself to do here is be patient with this. This has to be dealt with separately from everything else. So I'm going to square all the pieces and multiply these things together, get whatever I get. So 14 squared is 196. If you knew that, fine. If you didn't know that, use a calculator. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. 2 times 8 times 9 is 144. So I'm just calculating things. 14 times 14, 8 times 8, 9 times 9, 2 times 8 times 9. Um, the cosine of B is still attached to this product, but this is the end result of that product, the negative 144. Okay. Next, I want to get that thing all by itself, the highlighted blue guy all by itself. So I want to get anything that's not that over here. So I need to take the 64 and say minus 64. I need to take the 81 and say minus 81. Okay? I'm keeping the 144 attached to cosine of B because it's attached to cosine of B. It is negative 144 that's attached there. So come over here and I type in 196 minus 64 minus 81 equals, comes out to 51. So positive 51 on this side equals negative 144 cosine of B on that side. So again, in a side, side, side scenario, you're going to get a step looking like this in your work every single time. This number is attached to that. It's not going to be involved in this. So I've seen people do this improperly. They want to add these and that and then move it over. But again, these guys are just numbers. They move over. This number is attached. So it has to be taken care of through division. So I'm going to divide by 144 here, negative 144. Divide by negative 144 here. And that gets me cosine of B equals, and then I get my calculator out, I'm going to type in exactly what I see, 51 divided by negative 144. Signs do matter in this situation, so make sure you're careful with signs. You get negative 0.3542. Okay. So, just as with the law of sines, when it says sine of an angle equals a number, we do inverse sine. It says cosine of an angle equals a number, so I'm going to say 
measure of angle B is going to equal the inverse cosine of negative 0.3542. Grab my calculator, type in second cosine, negative 0.3542, and notice it's a obtuse angle, 110.7444. If you weren't careful with signs, you end up with a positive 0.3542. Notice your answer is way off. Okay, so again, be careful with signs in the process that you do it properly. Um, whatever sign ends up happening, this is always a minus in front of this. So this should always be a negative number here. You're going to divide by a negative. Positive divided by negative makes it negative. All right? So angle B is 110.74. So again, if I make my answer box over here, I'll make that here. Say measure of angle A equals something, measure of angle B equals something, measure of angle C equals something. B is 110.74 degrees. Again, if we were going sig figs on that, we would have gone 110, right? The zero is not significant because it's in front of the decimal. But again, a couple decimal places for me is fine. Uh, once I know that angle B is 110.7444, now I'm going to revert to the law of sines to find either A or C. They're both acute angles, so it doesn't matter which one I find. Um, I usually go with the smallest one. So if it's me, I'm going to find C first. So if I'm looking at C, C is opposite 8, and B is opposite 14. All right? So I'm going to have um, 8 over sine of C equals 14 over sine of 110.7444. Get my calculator out, I type in sine 110.7444, and that is 0.9352. Apply, apply the law of sines, you get a nice little proportion there. We're going to cross multiply the proportion to get the um, fractions out of the picture, so 14 sine of C equals 0.9352 times 8. So it's this product equals that product. That's 7.4816. Divide by 14 to get sine of C all by itself. And 7.4816 in the calculator already divided by 14 is 0.5344. So the measure of angle C is going to equal the inverse sine of 0.5344. And notice real quick, just to clarify, this says cosine equals, we do inverse cosine. This says sine equals, we do inverse sine. So let the... Um, trig function you have in your picture tell you which one to use to get the answer. So inverse sine of 0.5344 is inverse sine 32.3032. So if I'm rounding two decimal places, 32.30. For angle C. Now, when I go to find angle A, angle A is simply 180 minus the two angles we already know. And again, adding and subtracting a couple decimal places, I don't need to worry about the four decimal place approximations for that. So I'm going to say measure of angle A is equal to 180 minus 110.74 minus 32.30. Minus 32.30 comes out to 36.96. Got a nice little answer box over there. And again, just a quick check here to verify that my answers do seem to be reasonable for what I've got. 
Um, C is the smallest angle because it's opposite the smallest side, and you can see C is smaller than the other two. Um, angle A should be in the middle, 36.96 is in between, and then B should be the biggest. It's opposite the biggest side, so it's the biggest. So the angles are in the proper proportion of size compared to the side that measures opposite. So um, that's usually my quick check. If, if the angles are in the right relationship there, I'm going to assume I did everything correctly. Um, obviously, you can transpose a number here or there to so get a wrong answer, but that's a pretty, pretty easy little quick check to give you a pretty peace of mind there. So um, those are the two scenarios where law of cosines is used first. So again, side angle side, the angles in between the given sides, law of cosines gets you the right answer for the missing side. Use law of sines to find one of the angles and then subtract one and you find the other. Always find a small angle with law of sines. For side, 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 I just find the biggest angle with the law of cosines to begin with. That's what I do. Then the leftovers are definitely going to get the right answer for the law of sines. If I did find A or C first, I just couldn't find angle B in this step because I would have gotten the wrong answer for B because the calculator spit out an acute answer instead of obtuse. So just be careful the biggest angle can be obtuse and law of signs won't find that.